Urban exploration was my thrill. The adrenaline rush of sneaking into places long forgotten, it was intoxicating. Tonight I was venturing into the old Willowbrook Asylum, a place infamous for its dark history and alleged hauntings. I arrived at the asylum just after midnight, the air crisp and biting against my skin. The smell of damp earth and decaying wood filled my nostrils as I approached the entrance. The towering, ivy-covered walls towered over me, their shadows stretching along the moonlight path. I slipped through a gap in the rusted iron gate and made my way to the main building. The heavy wooden door creaked open with a groan that echoed through the empty halls. I stepped inside. Each step I took stirred up a cloud of dust that tickled my nose and throat. The beam of my flashlight cut through the darkness, revealing peeling wallpaper, broken furniture, and scattered debris. My footsteps echoed in the vast emptiness, amplifying the sense of isolation. The asylum had been abandoned for decades, yet it felt like something was still lurking in the shadows, watching me. I wandered through the halls, my heart pounding with a mix of excitement and fear. The stories about this place were unsettling. Patients mistreated, mysterious deaths, and ghost sightings. But I had never encountered anything paranormal in my explorations before, and part of me hoped tonight would be different. As I ventured deeper into the asylum, the air grew colder and the smells more pungent. The stench of decay became overpowering, making me gag. I pulled my gas mask up over my nose, trying to filter out the worst of it. The oppressive atmosphere seemed to press down on me, the silence almost deafening. I entered a room that appeared to have been a dorm. Rusty bed frames lined the walls, their mattresses long gone. The floor was littered with yellowed papers and broken glass. As I scanned the room, something caught my eye a dark stain on the far wall. I approached it, the beam of my flashlight revealing a smeared, hand-shaped mark. My heart dropped to my stomach when I realized it was dried blood. A sudden noise made me jump, a soft, shuffling sound coming from the hallway. I turned off my flashlight and pressed myself against the wall, holding my breath. The shuffling grew louder, closer. My heart raced, every instinct screaming at me to run but I froze. The sound stopped just outside the door. I strained my ears, trying to make out any other noises. After what felt like an eternity, I slowly peeked around the corner. The hallway was empty, but the uneasy feeling remained. I turned my flashlight back on and decided it was time to leave. Whatever was here, I didn't want to meet it. I retraced my steps, moving quickly but cautiously. My breath came out in visible puffs and I shivered uncontrollably. As I neared the entrance, I heard it again, the shuffling sound, but this time it was accompanied by a faint whispering. I started to panic. I started running, the beam of my flashlight bouncing wildly. My imagination made up images of the asylum's former patients, their spirits trapped in this place of suffering. I reached the entrance and pushed through the door, the fresh air hitting me like a slap in the face. I stumbled outside, gasping for breath, the whispers fading out. I didn't stop running until I was back in my car. As I drove away, my hands shook on the steering wheel. I had always loved the thrill of urban exploration, but tonight had been different. Tonight, I had encountered something I couldn't explain, something that had left me questioning the safety of my favorite hobby. The asylum remained a dark silhouette in my rearview mirror its secrets hidden in the shadows. I knew I would never return, but the memory of that night would haunt me forever. The plan was simple. Enjoy a weekend camping trip. We drove up to the national park, our car loaded with camping supplies. We set up our tents in a clearing surrounded by tall pines the ground beneath us soft with needles. The air was cool and crisp, carrying the faint scent of wildflowers. We gathered wood for a fire. As night fell, while the fire burned, we cooked our dinner over the flames. After eating, we settled around the fire, 
telling stories and laughing. The flames kept us warm from the chilly night air. The forest was alive with sounds, crickets chirping, leaves rustling in the breeze, and the occasional hoot of an owl. Around midnight, we decided to turn in. I crawled into my tent, the smell of smoke clinging to my clothes. I lay in my sleeping bag, listening to the sounds of the forest. The air inside the tent was cold, and I could see my breath as I exhaled. I was drifting off to sleep when I heard it. Faint footsteps coming from the edge of the campsite. My eyes snapped open, and I lay still, straining to hear over the pounding of my heart. The footsteps came again, louder this time. I could smell something strange now, a musky, almost rotten odor. I unzipped my tent, just enough to look one eye out. The fire had died down to glowing embers, casting an eerie red light across the clearing. I saw movement near the trees, a shadowy figure just beyond the reach of the light. The footsteps stopped, replaced by an unnatural silence. I felt a surge of fear, my mouth dry and my hands trembling. Mark? Lisa? I whispered, hoping they were awake and had heard it too. There was no response. I glanced over at their tents. They were zipped up tight. I considered waking them but hesitated, not wanting to panic them if it was just an animal. I grabbed my flashlight and stepped out of my tent, the cold night air biting at my skin. I pointed the flashlight toward the trees and my blood ran cold. Standing at the edge of the clearing was a figure unlike anything I had ever seen. It was tall, unnaturally so, with limbs that seemed too long for its body. Its skin was pale and stretched tight over its bones, and its eyes glowed with an eerie light. The creature let out a loud growl. I took a step back, my legs shaking. The air seemed to thicken and it was hard to breathe. The smell of the musky creature was suffocating. In a flash, the creature moved, darting closer to the tents. I stumbled backward, nearly dropping the flashlight. The creature's eyes locked onto mine, and I felt a chill run through my entire body. It was as if it was looking into my very soul. The forest around me seemed to blur, and all I could focus on were those glowing eyes. Mark, Lisa, wake up, I shouted my voice shaking with fear. Their tents rustled and I heard muffled voices as they woke up. The creature turned its head toward the sound and I seized the moment. I grabbed a burning stick from the fire pit and thrust it toward the creature. The flames flared and the smell of burning wood filled the air. The creature hissed, a sound like steam escaping from a boiling pot and recoiled from the fire. It backed away, its eyes never leaving mine. Mark and Lisa stumbled out of their tents, their faces pale with confusion and fear. What the hell is that? Mark shouted, his voice trembling. I don't know. We need to get out of here. I yelled back, the fear in my voice unmistakable. We grabbed our backpacks and ran, not bothering to pack up the tents. The creature's growls followed us as we fled through the forest, the stench of the musky creaturing lingering in the air. The trees seemed to close in around us, and the darkness was nearly impenetrable. My heart pounded in my chest, and my lungs burned from the exertion. We finally reached the car, and I fumbled with the keys, my hands shaking uncontrollably. We piled in, and I started the engine, the headlights cutting through the darkness. I glanced back toward the forest and didn't see the creature. We sped away. My mind raced, replaying the encounter over and over, we didn't stop driving until we reached the safety of the city. We agreed never to speak of what had happened, but the memory stayed with me, haunting my dreams. The snow fell gently from the sky, covering our neighborhood in a blanket of white. My friends and I couldn't wait for the first big snowfall of the year. The air was crisp, and I could smell the fresh, clean scent of snow mixed with the faint aroma of pine trees. We gathered at the park, our laughter echoing in the cold air as we started our snowball fight. The snow was perfect for packing, and I formed a solid snowball, feeling the icy chill seep into my gloves. My friend Mike was ducking behind a tree 
laughing as he lobbed snowballs in my direction. I took aim, intending to hit him square in the back, but my throw went wide. The snowball sailed past Mike and struck a passing car with a loud thud. The car screeched to a halt and I saw a cracked spider across the windshield where my snowball had hit. Panic surged through me and I turned to my friends. Run, I yelled, my voice trembling with fear. We scattered, our feet slipping on the icy ground as we sprinted away. My heart pounded in my chest and I could feel the cold air burning in my lungs. I didn't dare look back, but I could hear the car door slam and the crunch of boots on snow as the driver gave chase. We managed to lose him in the maze of backyards and alleys, finally collapsing on the ground behind Mike's garage. Our breaths were ragged and our faces were flushed with cold and adrenaline. We laughed nervously, trying to shake off the fear. That night, we got online to play video games, hoping to distract ourselves from what happened earlier that day. Suddenly, Mike went silent. One moment he was laughing, the next, nothing. Mike, you there? I asked. There was no response. The game showed he was still online, but he wasn't moving or talking. My heart skipped a beat, and I felt a cold knot form in my stomach. Mike, come on, this isn't funny. I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Still nothing. I glanced at the chat window, seeing our other friends typing similar messages. The minutes ticked by, each one stretching longer than the last. The uneasy feeling grew stronger, and I could feel my palms growing sweaty despite the cold. Suddenly Mike's screen went dark, and his avatar disappeared from the game. The chat window filled with concerned messages, but there was no response from Mike. I tried calling him, but it went straight to voicemail. I could feel my pulse quicken, and a cold sweat broke out on my forehead. Something was wrong, very wrong. The next morning, I learned that Mike was missing. His parents had come home to find the back door wide open, snow tracked through the house. The police were called, but there was no sign of him. My friends and I were questioned, but we had no answers to give. Days turned into weeks, and there was still no sign of Mike. The neighborhood was gripped by fear, and I could see the worry in everyone's eyes. The smell of snow and pine, once comforting, now felt oppressive, a constant reminder of that fateful day. One night, unable to sleep, I sat by my window, staring out at the snow-covered street. The world was silent, the only sound the faint rustle of branches in the wind. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that the man from the car was still out there, waiting. Suddenly, my phone rang. I jumped, the sound slicing through the tense silence. I glanced at the screen and saw Mike's name. Relief flooded through me as I answered. Mike, what happened? You scared us, I said my voice shaking with a mixture of anger and relief. But the voice on the other end wasn't Mike's. It was deeper, rougher, filled with a chilling calmness. You should have apologized, the voice said. The blood drained from my face and my heart pounded in my chest. It was the man from the car. My hand trembled as I gripped the phone, my mind racing. I hung up, my heart racing. I knew then that I was next. The next day, I vanished leaving behind only the memory of a snowball fight that had gone horribly wrong. The man from the car had gotten his revenge, and I was never seen or heard from again until now. It was supposed to be a relaxing weekend getaway. I had booked a charming Airbnb in a small town, hoping to escape the chaos of the city. As I drove up the winding dirt road, the smell of pine trees and fresh earth filled the car. I entered the cabin, the wooden floors creaking underfoot. The interior was quaint, filled with rustic furniture and knickknacks. There was a faint smell of cedar and something else, something I couldn't quite place. It was a musty, almost damp odor that seemed to linger in the corners. I shrugged it off and ignored it. After unpacking, I decided to explore the area. As the sun began to set, I headed back to the cabin, 
the smell of the forest clinging to my clothes. Back inside, I lit a fire in the fireplace, the crackling flames adding warmth to the chilly evening. The smell of burning wood mingled with the ever-present musk, creating an oddly comforting atmosphere. I settled onto the couch with a book, the glow of the fire casting flickering shadows on the walls. Hours passed, and I began to feel sleepy. The fire had died down to glowing embers, and the cabin was quiet, save for the occasional creak of the wooden beams. I decided to call it a night and headed to the bedroom. T, as I drifted off to sleep, a sudden noise jolted me awake. It was a faint tapping sound, like someone knocking on wood. My heart pounded in my chest, and I strained to hear over the silence. The tapping continued. Hello? I called out. No response. The tapping grew louder, more urgent. It seemed to be coming from beneath the floorboards. I swung my legs over the side of the bed, the cold wooden floor sending a shiver up my spine. I grabbed my phone, turned on the flashlight, and crept toward the sound. The tapping continued, echoing through the cabin. I followed it to a small door in the hallway, one I hadn't noticed before. I opened the door wider and shined the flashlight into the darkness. A narrow staircase led down into a basement, the air thick with the smell of mold and decay. The tapping was louder now, coming from the far end of the basement. The basement was cold and damp, the air heavy with the stench of rot. The floor was covered in dirt, and old wooden beams supported the ceiling. The tapping was louder now, almost deafening. It was coming from a large wooden crate in the corner. I approached the crate, my hands shaking. The smell of decay was overwhelming, and I could barely breathe. I reached out and lifted the lid. Inside was a bundle of old clothes. I moved the flashlight, and my breath caught in my throat. Beneath the clothes was a skeletal hand, the bones yellowed with age. The tapping stopped abruptly, and the silence was suffocating. I stumbled back, dropping my phone. The room plunged into darkness and I heard a soft shuffling sound behind me. I turned, my heart pounding in my ears. A figure stood in the doorway, its outline barely visible in the dim light. It was tall and thin, its eyes glowing faintly. The smell of decay was overpowering and I gagged, trying to hold back the rising panic. The figure moved closer, its steps slow and deliberate. Leave, a voice whispered, raspy and filled with menace. I didn't need to be told twice. I bolted up the stairs, my mind racing. I could hear the shuffling steps behind me, the smell of decay following me like a shadow. I burst through the cabin door and ran to my car. The engine roared to life and I sped down the dirt road, the cabin disappearing in the rear view mirror. I never looked back. I vowed never to return to that place. And to this day, the thought of an Airbnb fills me with an indescribable dread.